Okay, I'm starting my Katy Trail experience here. I'm going to be camping all week, starting off in Clinton and uh, able to park my Jeep at the Clinton Community Center. They have my license information and everything, and they'll keep an eye on it for me. And uh, I'll let you know how it goes. This is the first time I've tried something like this on a little bike, and it's going to be 237.2 miles camping along the way. Keep you posted. Starting the Katy Trail. This is the very end in Clinton. Even before the trailhead. It's just a mile down the road maybe at that. So I thought I'd get it from the very end. Why not? Trying out my new tires. Schwab Marathon. And I hope it, they're in it for the long haul. They definitely feel cushier, which is nice when it's a loaded bike. Yeah, I'm with the wind. That's a good thing, especially considering this is an up uphill, if you can call it that, mild grade, probably to Sedalia, something like that. I'll take a picture by the high elevation marker. So I'm set for a beautiful day in the saddle on the Katy Trail. Coming up on the first trailhead, Clinton, Missouri. One of many to come. Nice, has bike tools, history, map, restrooms, everything you should need. This caboose is at the Clinton Trailhead. It's called the MKT, which stands for Missouri, Kansas, Texas. Railway is no longer in use, and so it's been turned into a rails trail. As I was saying, this trailhead has everything you would need, including flushing restrooms, which is a treat. Here we go. Longest ride I had this summer so far has been 55 miles. Hope I can do this about 80 miles a day for the first couple of days. Hi guys. Okay, I'm trying to figure out this camera. I don't know if you saw the couple that was biking. I'll try to keep you tuned on some of the interesting things happening along here. This is the first people I've seen, except for right at the trailhead. And uh, they were biking. It looked like they had some panniers, so they were probably camping too. I also saw some butterflies, yellow, black. I think an orange monarch, it came through pretty quick. And then I saw a nice little turtle crossing the road. When he saw me coming, he ducked in pretty quick. Turtles can be kind of quick. State park rules apply. West Fork Tebow Creek. This is called the Prairie Restoration Area. Horses ahead. Hi guys.
Thank you. you All right. I need one of those. That was special. This is a place called Sand Creek. Made it to Calhoun. I think it's an elevator of some kind, I'm not a farmer. Trailhead's on up ahead, but I'm gonna get off here and get a drink and something to eat at the convenience store that I know is at the top of the hill up on the left. Okay, I'm back on the trail after the convenience store. <clears throat> it's called Bullseye. Here in Calhoun. Not much in the way of health food. They do have some energy bars, but I have a lot of those along. So I got a pizza, pulled the pepperoni slices off of it. So it's just a cheese pizza with pepperoni grease. I needed something besides energy bars. I think I'm going to be relying on those on a further stretch. I'm going to show you the trailhead. It's a little further ahead. Also, um, yeah, I'll show you my bike setup. I have the uh, GoPro mount, really nice bright headlight quad lock for my phone that I'm taking the picture with. It sits right back behind the white flashlight on the stem. And then I also have the bar ends on the right and left of the handlebars to make it much well better you have a little more leverage but mostly you have somewhere else to put your hands to avoid numbness give you some variety all right let's see the trailhead here here is the trailhead i would have to turn right here at this road which i did on a previous ride i went this far turned around and went back so it was about a 20 some 20 mile ride 20 point something just to test it out before i did this long ride so now officially i've gone farther on the katie trail than i've ever gone before so all this is new territory back there at the convenience store my gps strava said i had gone 10.2 miles and average speed 11.7 my goal is not to set a speed record. This is the first time I've ridden a bike fully loaded. The bike's fully loaded, not me. And, you know, it's heavier. And I think it's really, for me, going to be more a matter of pacing myself to conserve energy and my muscles because the furthest I've gone this summer so far is 55 miles. As I had said earlier, I think. And now, tonight, today's goal is 76.6 .6 to go to, well, I forgot the name of it. It's the Roundhouse Campground. And uh, see if I can find the name real quick. It is. Uh, no, for some reason I can't find it. Is it Franklin? Franklin, Missouri? Stay tuned, I'll let you know. This is Tebow Creek. East Fork. Tebow Creek. I 
I probably won't show you every landmark, every bridge, but this is early in the ride. It all looks interesting right now. I read or heard from somebody that the first day or so on this trail coming from the Clinton side is boring compared to the rest of the trail. I'm not bored yet. Having a good time. And uh, oh, I see 52 crosses here. I think that might be the same road, I'm not sure, that goes alongside of uh, Prairie Spirit Trail. Maybe that's 51, I don't know. Made it to Windsor. All uphill, just about, to Windsor from uh, where I was last. We got everything here, camping included. Okay, here we are at the Windsor Trailhead. Looks like there's a little downtown in Windsor to the right. To the left is a Casey's and a hardware store. All kinds of grain elevators near the railroad tracks. Or what used to be the railroad track here. Don't you see the caboose here? Yep. Centennial edition, bicentennial edition. Neat history on that. Reading the guidebook to the prairie, I mean, uh, the Katy Trail guidebook tells about that caboose and how the town got it. How surprised they were that it was a bicentennial edition after they stripped the paint. So they restored it to its original glory. Time for a break. Okay, here in Windsor. This is take, taking longer than I thought it would. I'm not used to pulling this kind of a load, but um, well, I'm enjoying it. At least there's these stops along the way. May not make it to the campground by night tonight. I've got a good light, so it should be okay. Windsor, about five and a half miles from the highest point on the whole Katy Trail. I'm hoping it gets a little easier after that. It's not been hard, it's been a different kind of hard. Uh, having the bike fully loaded and then these Schwalbe tires, I guess how you say it. Marathon tires, you know, when you're uh, climbing uphill, you feel it. Put it in the lower gear, just trying to turn the pedals. But then uh, when you uh, decline slightly, go downhill, it's nice to feel that momentum. And you can actually glide some, which you can't normally do on trails with this minor of uh, inclines and declines. So uh, anyhow, there's a trade-off. But uh, this kind of effort is more marathon, just like the tires say. I'm trying to uh, just take it easy. And um, mile marker, well, Strava says I've gone 18.8 .8 miles, which is roughly one quarter of the way for the day. Got a late start, and uh, stay tuned. The bridge says Chicago, Rock Island, and Pacific Railroad. So I just saw another sign that said Prairie Restoration Area. Back there at Windsor, it kind of explained that. When farmers came into the area, while well, all of this was uh, grassy fields, what do they call that? But when farmers moved in and put their uh, fences up and put out the natural grass fires, then uh, the prairies then were kind of taken over by trees and farmland. Trees where there wasn't farmland. But the railroads, in a weird kind of way, uh, actually helped preserve 
the grasslands because of the 100 foot right of way. But the railroads only took about 15, 30 feet of it. And now that it's gone back to trails, it's an effort to restore the grasslands so that the scenery you see along the trail is uh, the stuff you would have seen. The types of grasses, the uh, flowers, I see some goldenrod over there, a certain kind of sunflower that crops up. There's some on the left, I don't think you can see it. So that's what this is about. I'll let you know when the high point of the trail happens. The Wow, look at this road. Crops, farms. It's beautiful out here. Okay, here's Bryson coming up on this intersection. It's basically all it is anymore is an intersection. You may not be able to see it in the camera yet, but I can certainly see the road climbing into the horizon. That looks just like the picture back there at the trailhead, so I'm anticipating that that is going to be the highest elevation on the trail. 955, uh, 955 feet above sea level. And then it says it drops 50 feet after that. I, I don't know if that's before the next trailhead or just what the measurement is. Okay, yes, this is the high point. Elevation 955. Had a nice tailwind through there, so I'm hoping though that I get a little down, at least level, and the tailwind. That would really help me on my first day. Uh, there's, can you read that? High point, elevation 955 feet. Nice little bench here, as well as an information. Standard. Okay, Osage Plains, named after the Osage people, once the dominant tribe in western Missouri. Prairie, tall grass prairie, narrow woodlands along streams and rivers. That's the way it used to be. Coming up on Green Ridge. Green Ridge, Missouri. Trailhead. Like they do have a little downtown area. Okay, so just leaving the um, Green Ridge Trailhead, met somebody interesting here. A little aged lady that has walked across America, done a lot of bicycling, actually is heading east on the Katy Trail just like me. But <laughs> she's going on to like, I don't know, Connecticut or and then down to Florida. Her goal is to walk or bike to every state in the Union. And so uh, she looks to be in her 60s maybe. Good for her. I'll probably catch up to her again here. Maybe, I don't know how fast she is. She's been going a long ways. She's gonna find a campground up here that doesn't charge to camp or a I think it's a community park. And then she knows the hostels along here as well. If I do this again, I might do that. I don't know. A little cheaper, as long as they have shower facilities at this stage. I still think I want to shower every day. All right. I think I might see her up there. Stopped at uh, Casey's, this town, that's about all it had. And Got some water, took some ibuprofen <laughs> on the road again. Oh yeah, and I wanted to say that Sedalia is the next trailhead 
that's going to be a major town. I think that's where the state fair is. And that is 12.1 miles away. Okay, those 12.1 miles went very fast. I liked it. Getting close to halfway there today. If the rest of it's like that. I think part of the secret is hydrating and energy bars, rest now and again. But also I think maybe it was less uphill. Using this camera because the uh, GoPro must be out of battery. Oh yeah, I'm going to Subway, so I'm actually on the road right now. Okay, here we are in the morning of day two. It's uh, 10 53. I didn't get much earlier start this time So we'll see how it goes. My schedule's a little bit shot Battery was too on the GoPro and that's why We're all the way up here. I Ended up going 69 point. I don't know point one yesterday stopping at Pilot Grove Fortunately there's a Casey's here. There's a, I was really glad to see that beacon in the night. Uh, I was riding at nighttime. My light was really doing well. Uh, but it was starting to run out. Very bright. I had it on the bright, brightest setting. I could have gotten by on the dimmest and it would have helped it. So, um, yeah, Casey's told me that I could camp in the city park. And I remember reading that online. I just had to call Pete, the local police, to let him know I was going to stay there. Had the whole park to myself. No shower, unfortunately. But uh, so here I am, just heading north now again, not northeast, from Pilot Grove. Hope to make it another, another 70 miles today. For sure. Everything worked well. I'm thankful for these tires, my light, my tent, sleeping uh, bag, and uh, lightweight sleeping pad and pillow. Man, all those, once I got adjusted to it, I think I slept pretty well by short. Because it was about after midnight by the time I went to sleep. It was about 11 o'clock now in the morning. Um, uh, it's actually probably one o'clock by the time I got to sleep. Part of the reason for that was the grain elevator making all kinds of noise all night long. Ironic, isn't it? You go to get away from it all. And I can still hear the crickets sometimes, but I was grateful for the accommodations. And now here we are, day two. Muscles were cramping up pretty bad, even this morning. But we'll see what another day in the saddle does to get things loosened up. Maybe I'll try a slower pace this time and see what happens. Okay, here's Boonville. That's a nice train station. <clears throat> We're supposed to be getting pretty scenic here in a little while. There's a bike shop here, but it's closed. According to the hours, I think it's supposed to be open.
that Katy Trail goes to the right here. Okay, crossing the river. This be the Missouri River. We'll find out. According to one trail rider, this is their favorite part of the trail. Others have said the other part of Roachport is their favorite. There's just a little bit of a climb to get up here. Not bad, but I'm trying to conserve. I do see a sign ahead. Maybe it'll tell us. Nope, entering Howard County. Well, I will give you a view off into the west anyway. The river. Hopefully it's able to focus on the river and not the bars. I think the scenery is going to get better. Now here's a section of the Katy Trail just after the bridge we went across. It's paved. Looks like it used to be a road in service for vehicles other than bikes. I'll take it. We're traveling now pretty close to the river according to the map. Although you can't see the river from here. So it's level. I'd be very happy if it continues like this for quite some time. Coming up on some places that... Um, well, I think this is one of them. This creek, where it connected with the Missouri River. Lewis and Clark camped at. So I think it'd be a little to our right. Just a quick look at the scenery on this end as I approach Roachport. Cornfields to the left. Looks like something else on the right. Beans maybe. They look like beans. Soy. Still flat. Sometimes I change up the gear just to make it a little different. Coming into Roachport now. I think that's my friend Ken rode with me for a little while. Not Ken, Ray. Good friends. Ray. Yeah, this is nice. Nice and cool. Beautiful scenery. A river or just what it is. Maybe this sign will tell us. It's fairly wide. Monoto Creek. Roachport, Missouri. I'm told it gets really scenic the further we go this way. Had a good lunch at a place that opened up. They were closed, but opened up just for me, and I really appreciate that. I'll probably be back here sometime in the fall. I think it'd be a nice fall place. Yeah, so I can see the Missouri River to the right. I don't know if it shows up on the camera too much. Very nice. 
Hope it's like this for some time. It's going to be a race against the sun going down to get to Tebbets, but I'm told that it's a great hostel. I'm really hoping to make it. That way, I just might stay on schedule for my train ticket on Saturday. Birch Creek. McBain Trailhead. Sixteen miles to go to the next major town. There might be a few stops before then. A little further back, there was a nice uh, campground boat dock called Cooper's Landing. Of all things, it had a Thai kitchen. Food was recommended to me. I'm not hungry yet, though. And uh, just a little before that, there was a sculpture. I happened to look left into the woods uh, where I would have missed it. And uh, it was just like the Cadillac out west, Cadillac Ranch, I guess it is, where the Cadillacs have buried, sticking out. This one was boats of different colors. So, well, that was kind of cool. Quirker, I've entered, entered the quirky zone of the Katy Trail. Good, I'm still on it. I just wandered back there because it was dual track, double track. Hartsburg, Missouri. It's been a lot of that kind of scenery. Mainly it's been in the trees, I think, maybe 50 50. Still beside the Missouri River. Moon's coming out nicely. Considering two options about spending the night somewhere. Jefferson City is about seven miles up the road. 
and uh, big city. It would probably end up being a hotel. Unless there's a campground that's easy to get to or easier to get to. I'll check it out, I think, when I get to the trailhead. The other is to go an additional 10 miles and go to a hostel in Tebbets. T-E-B-B-E-T-S. It's highly recommended. Somebody else said there's, somebody told me there's not much in the town, however. Nothing in the town to eat. And if the hostel is closed, I'm sunk. One guy said they're not always open, so it's good to call ahead. One lady said they're always open and they hang a key on a pole. I like that. I hope it's that way if I choose to go further. It's a bit of a risk. Several miles from Jefferson now. Lights over there maybe for an exit. I'm hoping. And uh, I don't know, it looks like a business. And actually, I do see the Jefferson Courthouse. You can't see it, it just went behind the trees and it's far away. So, yeah, maybe I can get some supper there because Tebbets has no food, I'm told. And then I can decide whether to go further or not. I'm still feeling like I have maybe an additional 10 miles in me that would take me there. So, we'll see. Well, I read the sign at the Jefferson Trailhead. I decided to go on to Tebbets. Well, a couple reasons. It's where I want to stay. I've never stayed at a hostel before. And uh, those who have stayed there really enjoyed it. But uh, also, I'd have to ride an additional three miles into Jefferson. That means tomorrow, three additional miles. So that's six miles right there not even counting towards my goal where I wanted to go. Some advantages of staying in Jefferson would be if I did want to, you know, cash in the chips, so to speak, go home, it'd be more convenient to do it from that location, probably. But I'm still going. We'll see what I feel like tonight and tomorrow. Okay, this is definitely the hardest part that I've done today. Road's in really bad shape. And uh, even the parts that are good are real sandy and sap your strength. So, uh, coming up, we should be on uh, seven miles to go, Mark. I hope all seven miles aren't like this. And then it straightens out for a while. I'm beginning to think I shouldn't have taken this way. It's pretty washed out. This is uh, the second or third time I've had to get off the bike. Oh. Is that washed out? Mm. Okay. 
Might be safe to get back on it for a little while. Boy, it's making these last few miles go really slow. Exert a lot of effort. Supposed to get more rain tonight. Storms are moving in. So I'm going to be checking on the state of the rest of the trail before I make a decision to go further tomorrow. Maybe there's uh, somebody there that's done that recently, somebody at the hostel. <sighs> mile marker 132. That means this is my last mile for tonight. Hopefully we'll find the hostel in order and have a way to get in. I don't know what I'm going to do about food. There was a lady that said that a lot of times there's food in the fridge. We'll see. I guess I was recording all of that. I'm not sure. Didn't mean to. I'm here in Tebets and I see the building straight ahead is Turner Katy Trail Shelter. That's the building that appeared. I'm just going to see if I can get in. Let's see, there's some explanation there. I'm here in the hostel. It's a Turner Shelter in Tebbets, Missouri. Rode late last night to get here. It's my bike. It's what it's like. Nice kitchen. Had some food in it, peanut butter and jelly, that kind of thing. Really came in handy this morning. I was too tired to eat last night, although it would have been better for, you know, Restore my muscles. Uh, shower room. It's nice. And a bike room. Had a good pump. That's all I needed. What else do they have in here? Huh. Little canteens. Bear Scouts. A water bottle. Some tubes. Well, I don't know about those tubes. They look kind of sketchy. Donations for bike repairs. This place operates on donations. Well, really nice of them to do this. There's a nice bike stand. There's the pump. That's as bright as it gets in this room. Here you have all the restrooms. There's nothing else down here. There is an upstairs. I haven't even looked at it. Restroom. Let's check out the upstairs, shall we? Stairs are a little difficult after riding so far. Well, I'll check it out. Ping pong table, pulpit, furniture. Mm -hmm. Okay. One night stay without reservations prior. 
I bet you if I called them and said I needed another night, they'd say okay. If they return my call. I, you know, I did call them late last night and uh, oh, had to leave a message with the, I think it was the Parks Department. I risked coming in here without hearing from them and all turned out well. Looks like I'm going to get about two hour earlier start than yesterday, which means it's a possibility if my legs hold out that I will be able to make it to Klondike Park before dark. Whew, it's going to be close and I'm setting up a tent. It's a pretty easy tent to set up. I did it in the dark once before though. Yeah, where is that? Okay, I'll show you the outside. Here's how this place operates. There's a key, and it says, please replace on pole. Conservation Foundation Katy Trail Shelter. There were some people here when I got here and the door was locked. Fortunately, they answered. They had taken the key inside, figuring it was safer, and everybody Here's the outside of this little community. Just a little rural place. I'm going to show you the Katie, whatever this is called, Turner Katie Trail Shelter. I was so glad to see this last night. Oh my. Whew. And the key goes out on this pole. If I can find a nail. And I don't know where the nail is. This could be a little difficult. Huh. I wonder if I can just do it this way. That's going to have to do. Okay, so I just uh, read the trailhead here in Tebbets, and it says to make it to Augusta is only 64.9 miles, which means, you know, that's the least I've traveled. That's a whole 10 miles less than what I traveled last night. So, looks like we didn't get that rain. Maybe we did, but it's dried up. Wasn't the kind of torrent that tears the road up. And if I can work through the the pain in my seat and knees, and I think just slow and steady will work that out. Pondike Park, Augusta. They did have a tire pump at the hostel, and you know these tires are new. They take 80 pounds. My rear tire was down to 40. My front tire down to 60. Hopefully it's just a beating that they take out here and not a slow leak. Yeah. I don't know what the next town is or the next trailhead. I should have looked at that. I'll just keep going my leisurely pace and see what it is. See what turns up. Yeah, it definitely rained last night. The trail is kind of grippy, a lot of rolling resistance and kind of smushy at the same time. I'm under the canopy now, so I'm going to pace myself and I know that there's going to be drier areas and the days, as the days go on, day goes on. 
it's going to uh, be easier pedaling. Yeah, just as I thought, the more exposed sections of the trail are dry. Still a good layer of fine pebbles, and it's against the wind today. Strange, because I think we're heading due east. So what I hoped was an easy ride today started off with quite some challenges. Portland, Missouri. The stretch was tough. Did not make a very good time today. There's a small town back there where I stopped and found a general store. Had a brunch, I guess you'd call it. Baked beans, chocolate milk, barbecue potato chips. Just went in, grabbed whatever I craved. Chips was for the salt. Hi. Hi. The beans were for the protein. Oh. I'm really dogging it today. day or two ago, I don't think it would have been a problem for me to keep up with them. This trail today, too, is wet, and my legs is weak as they are. Hi. Just not feeling it. My average speed is way off today. 7.7 .7 my average speed no 8.1 I've only put in 15.9 miles really dogging it even took a bit of a nap look at all these bikes up here got a lot of traffic today I really don't like that biker people are weird So I pretty much stayed all day at this campground. Needed a day of recovery. I was grateful for this. Had not intended on staying, but enjoyed it a lot. Actually, took a nap down at the trailhead. It's a very scenic place. <clears throat> this grand opening of this place is happening Saturday, but it was open today. It's changed hands, changing names. This is a campground, actually considered staying here. $10 for a tent site and showers. Now we're coming back to the Katy Trail head. So, see how close it is. Portland, Missouri. The name of the campground is the River's Edge. <clears throat> and you don't need to make reservations. There is a, I think that's the shower house right there. And there is a, a number on the side that you call. Apparently they come out and unlock it because it's locked currently. And I think the person at the at the grill here said that uh, the owner of it just lives next door. But I'm going to press on for about 10 miles after I check out this view. Ten miles from now is the Steamboat Junction that I read about online. Also no reservations required. It's on the honor system. 
<clears throat> so it's a nice view of the river here. Missouri River. trailheads here, right here. <clears throat> There's a bench that I napped, I think, for about an hour, maybe more. Breeze was coming in underneath and shaded from the sun. Interrupted occasionally when I could hear voices of other cyclists, but Surprisingly, not as much of that as I anticipated, and I'm glad. Okay, off we go. Let's make this an easy 10 miles to the Steamboat Junction. A place where I'll camp tonight. I do feel a lot better since having that rest. And having a lunch supper that was a burger and tater tots. I have to tell you, best burger and tater tots I've ever had. Maybe that's because I was so hungry, but I was expecting maybe a frozen patty. This is all fresh stuff, and it was really good. Really good. I've been vegetarian, pescatarian for, I don't know, four months, but I really was craving a cheeseburger. There was fish on the menu, but just wouldn't have done it. I know it. After this, back to my vegetarian, pescatarian ways. Yeah, but trying to figure out my calculations, they've been a little off. If my new calculations are right, I'm just about to the Steamboat Junction. It wasn't 10 miles. Which means I'll have to go more tomorrow. But after a good night's sleep, maybe uh, that's all just fine and good. What is this place? It's a private residence. Nope, there it is, Steamboat Junction. I am here. For the first time, I'm pulling into my accommodations in the daylight. Awesome. And I could recalculate what all tomorrow is going to bring. Yep. Information. All right, camping is up this hill. And here is the, the famed honor system. Oh. Snacks, vending. Awesome. I'm going to see what they have while it's daylight. Okay, I'm all checked in. Whoa, it looks like the campsites are here. It's kind of uh, insecty here in the woods. I was kind of hoping they'd be up, out in the open up on the top. Somebody told me that the higher away from the river that you can get is better. And uh, this is higher than you know, we've climbed a little hill to get here. But uh, anyway, here it is.
fairly close to the shower house, is where I want to be. Let's find it. That can't be it. That's one of the cabins over there she was telling me about on the phone. I'm sure of it. Interesting. Where, oh where, is the shower house? Is this it? I don't think so. I think this is one of the cabins. Let's see. Well, I found the primitive sites. They are back here behind the wash house a ways. Why am I doing this? Well, because I signed up for a primitive site. It costs less than a basic site that has the electro pickups. However, she said I could use the electro pickups for my cell phone and such. So, and this is right about where I'm going to be. This nice little flat area. Yeah, a little deeper into the woods. But hey, it's camping. Here's my campground for today. I decided to go ahead and be in the basic camping section. Nobody else is here. And there were ants all over the table at the last one. And I wanted to use the table. That is the shower house. So it's going to be real nice and convenient. This is the first time that I've set up in the daylight. Spent most of the time trying to get the, can't see it from here, but the drying clothesline on the, to hang up over there. There's a trick to that, and I haven't mastered it yet. Okay. Time for a shower. Okay. Final day of the Katy Trail. This will be day four. Yesterday was, you know, a pretty terrible day. I was feeling it from the first two. Having not really conditioned properly for carrying this kind of load and blowing those miles. But it was a good day all in all. Met some good people, kicked back, relaxed. Reassessed my trip. Instead of riding all the way into Illinois, catching the train, camping and riding back to my Jeep in Clinton, I'm just gonna finish the trail. Nancy's gonna meet me in St. Charles. And then we're just gonna enjoy the weekend together or a night there in St. Louis tonight. I really don't know how far I have to go. I didn't have any cell phone service. I'm guessing it's 65 miles. I'm hoping it's less. When I get to a trailhead, I'll check it again. Riding without gloves today. Sometime during the night, a critter took them. First, I thought I was just care careless and laid them down somewhere. And I retraced my steps. They were nowhere, and then I noticed a couple of my small pack bags were gone too. That I definitely unpacked a few things from last night. I didn't throw anything away, so. I know a critter came and took them. I hope he enjoys them. The pack bags weren't that critical or crucial. The gloves? Yeah, that's another story. I need that padding, I think, for the rest of the trip. I think one of the next towns has a bike shop in it if it's going to be open. Some of them open only on the weekends, or it's a little earlier than I usually ride or have ridden on this trip today. I wanted to get a good head start. Mile 110. And 
beat the heat. Boy, it gets really hot around noon and into the afternoon. So I wanted to make some good time before it got hot. Maybe I can get a pair of gloves at the bike shop coming up. The trail has definitely been more exposed to the wind and the sunlight here. It's out in the open. And as it turns out, the wind is also a headwind again today, at least as strong as yesterday. <clears throat> I'm hoping that soon I'll enter into a, a canopy of trees or the wind changes. Okay, I'm biking into town here to get some gloves for the long haul. There's a bike shop that's open here in Herman crossing the Missouri River now. Met a whole group that was on electric bicycles. Yeah. I saw a camping family. The dad was carrying the load. It looked like the whole family was on them too, man. There's a little girl. She was flying on her little kid's bike electric. There's a place to rent them right down here. That's pretty tempting, you know. I'm not gonna do it, but I can't say I didn't think about it. Nice to ride on the road again. Not as bumpy, not as much rolling resistance. Let's see if I can find this bike shop. Okay, I'm back. Well, disappointment, the bike shop did not have gloves. However, he did pump up my tires again. The front one was running 60. I gotta think it's because of the packs. The weight. Yep, I'll probably, and there's not a dollar store, well, it's another two miles away. As it is, I'm going to be going about four and a half miles out of my way off the trail to do this. But, uh, I'm thinking if I can just get a microfiber cloth and wrap it around, one around each hem grip. The only other thing I have is some used clothing some underwear something because the grips get pretty slippy not grippy up this hill man Whew. yeah maybe I'll just keep the camera on Well, you really can't see the river, can you? But I'm crossing it right now. And under the speed limit. need to crest this hill
That's a good sight. It's pretty, isn't it? We're going downhill a little bit now. That's good. Legs of rest. Are we on? Yeah. McKittrick. I just spent a long time trying to find some gloves. Got my tires popped up. Back on. Okay, 15 miles to the next stop. Thought I'd show you my new cycling gloves. Uh-huh, isn't that great? Look like a hobo. These are those jersey gloves. Got them for 50 cents plus tax for the pair. Ah, the bike shop in town, as I had mentioned, didn't have gloves. I think I mentioned that before. So, good. Tree down. A nice couple on the other way said that at mile marker 194 there was a tree down, but you can get under it. Yes. But you have to dismount to get under it. Here we go. No problem. Actually, it feels good to walk a little bit, even in the cleats. Maybe to the next shady place or two. I'm feeling a little better today than yesterday. Took care of myself a little more. Had uh, scrambled eggs this morning. Yeah. Toast. Before I knew the place served breakfast, I had one of those apple pie things, you know? Fried apple pie, tasty treats. Shouldn't have done it, but I'm working it off. And then, closer to lunchtime, what is it, 127? I had two chocolate milks. It's true what they say about chocolate milk. Nothing's quite like it when it comes to recovery. And, uh, Feeling better today. It's still a challenge, still very hot, still against the wind. People have asked me if I enjoyed my trip. And uh, for me, it's more of a challenge, you know? 
If I were going to enjoy it, I know now what to do. Not what I did. Allow plenty of time, maybe, maybe 40 miles a day, 50 tops. Mm-hmm. You know, the people on the trail are fun to talk to a little bit, despite what I said yesterday about bikers being weird. I was just so at the end of myself. A bunch of them were happy coming in. It seemed like all these old retired couples were just happy, happy, happy and not experiencing any of the difficulties I was. Uh, of course, they probably didn't go as far or maybe they're more conditioned because they've been riding longer. Some of them had a sag wagon. You know, nobody was towing this kind of load and had done the miles that I had earlier on. It's just an attitude problem of mine. But, uh, in fact, I met some really nice people at that place where, on the video, I had a burger. Yep, saw them again today at breakfast. They said they saw my bike and said, oh, Tim's here. This is where you get the food. They followed me to the other place. Man, was it awesome. All right, good. How are you? <laughs> you don't expect to merge into traffic, do you? Got this was on. Yeah. As I say him. Mm hmm Yeah, the guy lives in Iowa now and his son was there. Who uh, the guy in Iowa owns his own graphic arts company. He used to work for it, and the guy he worked for sold it and he bought it. And uh well he's done a lot of things, military, motorcycles, triumph back in the day and BSA. Camping alongside the road with nothing but the stars as a canopy. You know how the tale goes. It all sounds romantic. You know, I, I was thinking about that last night. This is not as romantic as one <laughs> might mistakenly think it is. Although I will look back on it, I'm sure, as being just that. You know, if you had all the time in the world to just stay to your own time schedule, and discover, I really think there would be a, you know, kind of a romance to it, but I'm sure I've passed up a lot of things on the way trying to make good time every day, and then by the time I make camp, you know, I've enjoyed making camp and breaking it down, I really have, but it'd be nice to have, you know, be at a campsite where there were other people once in a while. I can't believe I just said that. The first time was at a city park, as I had said. And uh, the second time, well, the second time was at a hostel. That was nice getting to meet a couple people there. And then uh, last night, Steamboat Junction, all by myself. They had a self-check-in system. Pretty cool. Oh, I think I showed you all that. I guess I wasn't by myself, but the raccoons got my gloves. My, two of my little pack sacks that came with my washcloth and my towel. I didn't really need those anyway. I was just thinking about those the day before. Thinking I might not use those. I'm just glad I didn't use my, lose my, leave my cell phone out or my Bluetooth earbuds, especially my cell phone.
Hey guys. senior citizens out here. I'm starting to feel old. Now when I get back, there's additional work that I hadn't really thought of, but I don't think it'll be too much of a chore. Airing out the tent, sweeping it out. So far, this ride has not been a wet ride, and uh, but there's still dew, so he puts things away slightly wet. You know, if the weather holds out, it could be that I could have stayed in St. Charles, and then biked the 30 miles in to St. Louis for, or the Kirkwood station for the train ride home. It still would have put me 10 miles from the nearest campground. You know what, I probably would have stayed at a hotel. And then another, oh I don't know, maybe 40 miles the next day for hotel is only about a half mile from the train station and then maybe another 40 miles the next day on roads to get to my Jeep and I wasn't thinking real clear yesterday and the way I felt I was just so out of it I kind of feel bad I'm having Nancy drive all this way to come tonight she is off tomorrow so Friday. We can enjoy ourselves in St. Louis. She'll have to swing by Clinton. Drop me off at the Jeep. Had I kept my train reservation, so four hours on ride, they would have probably adjusted my pickup. St. Louis to Kirkwood. Part of me wishes I had done that. But to cancel the train ticket and I guess my real goal was to ride the whole Katy Trail. St. Charles is the whole Katy Trail, at least it was until they added on I think 12 miles to go to Mockins. But the reports have been sketchy, I mean some have said that it's not real passable so yeah don't tell anybody I'm skipping that part some of the locals don't even know that that part exists yet there to the right was a kind of a placard a standard been a lot of those along the way describing the exploits, I guess, uh, adventures. Lewis and Clark. Rivers to our right. I don't know if you catch any of that. And I haven't stopped to read any of them. Truly. But at this time of the year, the mosquitoes haven't been bad. It really hasn't. It's been nice. It's 
been something I've always wanted to do ever since I think Ken Brake told me about the Katy Trail. It has quite a cult following. I would call it the Route 66 of Rails to Trails. Because you go, you know, 10 to 15 miles and then there's another trailhead of either what's left of a town, which oftentimes is just residential or just farm. But there's a trailhead with a restroom and a drinking fountain. Or sometimes there's a nice surprise, I've been really relying on those, where you can buy a Gatorade or even have a meal. Yep. And business is closed down. There was a book published a while back. Uh, I got the 10th edition to it actually about Katy Trail Guidebook. There are businesses listed in there. That has since closed. I've met a couple of people who were bringing that book with them on the trail. And I wish I had done that. I have the book. Didn't get it all read. Could have done without some other items and put that in. Yeah. Because when you're out here and the cell service is bad, you really can't research the area. But when you can, the BikeKatyTrail.com bike website, which is the same thing as KatyTrail.com, I believe, has the most up-to-date information on the businesses, the towns, and the trail surfaces. Maybe you can catch some more of that Missouri River here. noisy out in the country along the river. Hey guys. Afraid to get closer. This bike's pretty heavy. It could pull me down. I don't know what this was. All kinds of like real resorts start up and close down along the river. It's a good sight though, except for all of the build up there like a dam. Maybe that was on purpose to help make things good for the offloading of boats. But it looks like there was this cabin for rent up here. Mm -hmm. If I was desperate and wanted a place to camp, it would have been around here somewhere, maybe even under that house.
Some of these places could use a little bike stand. Your front wheel, your daughter, Scarlett, mm -hmm. was turning it and it didn't look like it was turning real freely. Yeah. Well, I lost all brakes. Yeah, there it goes. See? Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. Maybe it's just because it turned to the side like that. Yeah, it's better. Uh, it kind of, well, the helmet gets caught up and pulls the cable. Yeah. But I lost all my brakes yesterday. And here, I didn't put the other brake pad, like I ran out of brake pads, so I was just pushing against like the metal of the. Yeah. But I got a. I I'd rather have it rubbing than no brakes. I was going to buy a car yesterday. I couldn't oh, even stop it. Yeah, that's it. This thing weighs so much. How much does it weigh? I don't know. <laughs> you don't want to know. Exactly. Like I, I am not about to uh, yeah. put a whole lot of effort into finding that out. After Just, I packed this, it was the same way. I was yeah. like, you know. I know. You know it's enough. It's I, enough. Yeah, I packed too much stuff. Next right. time, I'm not going to pack yeah. that much. <laughs> We keep a running list. Okay, shade. Slightly overcast for the current time. Road that's harder packed on the trail. And the wind has died down. Hope it stays consistent like this for the next four and a half, five hours. Because it's good riding. spent longer than I needed to inside of a restaurant talking to some fellow travelers along the way but it was good conversation probably about another four hours to go that cloud cover is increasing and the wind is increasing also the headwind looks like there are storms all around and uh, yeah it's making it nice and cool a little bit harder pedaling because of the wind I just hope it doesn't uh, start pouring sprinkling be okay Supposed to be a big trestle bridge coming up. Here comes a bridge, might be a trestle bridge. No, it doesn't look that long. It's kind of short. Yeah, the wind has picked up quite a bit. It's kind of blowing from the southeast. A lot of times it feels like a headwind since I'm headed east. Definitely not making that 10 mile an hour I'd like to. Got a lot of wind resistance on this bike with packs. I feel a sprinkle every once and again.
some tree cover now. The wind is cut back a little bit, which is good. I'm hoping this uh, kind of storm blows over. It's one of those, though, where they just develop here and there and all merge together. I did check the weather, but I'm hoping for the best. You know, when out motorcycling, if you waited for the ideal weather, you'd never get out there, and you surprise how often the weather changes and you're just fine. So I'm hoping that's the case. Weather seems to have stabilized for the time being. Still a stiff headwind. But I haven't had the rain, thankfully. There was a clap of thunder pretty close by at the last trailhead. I think it was called Dutzau. Dutzau. But seem to be out of that now. Sorry about the rocking video. <laughs> I have to stand on the pedals in this headwind. It's pretty scenic through here, I think. marker back there indicated 30 more miles to go for St. Charles. Hoping the weather holds out. It's actually a pretty pleasant temperature. The roads have been dry, smoother, less rolling resistance. Everything I like except for the winds going the wrong direction. It'd be awesome if it was with me right now. But you can't have everything and every day has had its own challenges for sure. The untamable Missouri River and Katy Trail. Including the wildlife. These gloves are holding up just fine. Actually quite comfortable. Yep. Yeah, things I've been thinking today. The reason I came out here was to kind of get away from it all, be self-sufficient, kind of be alone, recoup. I 
didn't want to socialize. And then I found as it as it went on, as this trip progressed, that it's not just where you go, it's the people you meet along the way. I didn't take any of their pictures, but well, maybe one. Dan and his father Carl met up to do this together as a father-son. I think I mentioned them earlier. They were fascinating to talk to. The uh, people at the hostel. Yeah. Turning point for me in the conversations came when I was so down. This would have been yesterday. <laughs> I think it was 20 miles that day. I just had to snooze and spend some time. Even when Dan and Carl came into this greasy spoon place, which was really excellent, I didn't want to talk to them. <laughs> but they reached out to me. I actually found that to be very nice and thought you know, if I were to do a trip like this again, I would plan more time, not make it just a feat of physical, <laughs> a physical feat, I'll just put it that way, to prove something, but instead to uh, log the, the sights. You know, I've been heads down trying to pull this load and make my miles in. Ideally, maybe 40 miles. Anytime I stop somewhere, whether it's a store or a trailhead, people converse, and it is interesting. It's a matter of taking time for it, planning it, not being in such a hurry. And I wanted to be self-sufficient, and yet, you know, I learned things along the way from others and relied on them, such as trail clothes for repairs for the next two miles, about. One lady said it was no problem. She was able to get around the orange barricades and the roads were passable. So I didn't end up taking some long detour somewhere along the way. Then the owner of the bike shop that inflated my tires, for instance, and, you know, the owner of the shop yesterday who sold me my can of baked beans and opened them for me free of charge. Let me spend as much time as I wanted to sitting there eating. It even took a, well, <laughs> a few minutes nap until, uh, Another cycling couple came through and wanted to talk. So, so I did, and uh, well, it just makes me think of life and my job. I know, I know, I'm philosophizing here. All this work and must be getting to me, but I think I needed this because there's a lot to my job, but relationships are the best part of it. And I've met a lot of new people and new friends in different places of the country and world as a result of it. I'm very privileged and blessed to be able to travel. And one of the perks. But, but better than that is the people that I've met along the way. You know, it's you know how they say God works through people? I think it's true because different times along this trip, I have felt maybe a presence, God's presence looking out for me. But it wasn't just in coincidences or, you know, the weather making a way for me as it is today. I'm grateful for that. 
but for the right people showing up at the right time who brought encouragement that they didn't even know they were bringing or a service of some type that I needed like the people at the uh, yeah at the hostel who opened up the door for me but then offered also a brand muffin <laughs> and uh, then also tortilla to put the peanut butter and jelly on that was in the fridge. I mean small things. It makes me realize that as Christians our mission is not just to convince people that God exists, but to live incarnationally, that is to, in a way, be God's hands, His heart, His eyes, His feet, doing His works in small ways. I didn't specifically state that I was a Christian and tell people where I worked, but They seem to know. They kind of, after a little bit of conversation, had me pegged. Even though I didn't mention God or faith, whatever. And I think people were drawn to what they saw in me. It wasn't me, but... Christ living in me. And I found that even on vacation, when I want to get away from it all, the important things still hold true in my life. And my relationship with God and my relationship with other people. Can't get away from it, nor would I want to. So maybe I needed this trip to be more effective as a husband, a father, a Christian, a minister. Those uh, things that I do, the, the work, often seems, uh, it can seem like it's interrupting what I would really like to do like biking the Katy Trail from one end to another. But then I realized my work provides opportunities so many more to do the things that really matter in life relationally. Provides satisfaction. And from this trip, the things that I'm going to take away are, I think, the relationships, Whoa. although we didn't exchange business cards or even phone numbers, just the uh, memories, and uh, the prayers for wishing them well, yeah. By the end of those conversations, they all knew what I did, eventually ended up asking, and uh, told them I was a pastor for 28 years, and now I'm a dean at Nazarene Theological Seminary, and relationships is what I do. Well, I can see why this was closed for repairs. A lot of my commentary on this video was about things like road condition and weather, wondering if I can make it, complaining about how sore I was, blah, blah, blah. But there's really something a lot deeper going on in this journey than that.
Well, I'm in Augusta and I didn't expect this. I know there's a good campground here, but. <laughs> oh, wow. Music up there on the hill. Fantastic. Awesome. Live music. This would be a good destination to camp. I planned on it a little earlier, Klondike Park, but my schedule got turned around. Hi. I wanted to look at that bike. So. Okay. Oh, okay. Because of the weather, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. And then next week we'll be back to our regular Tuesday routine. Yeah. I had planned to camp here, and then I had to call and cancel it. My itinerary changed. Never been here before, but now I see it's a pretty yeah. cool happening place. Yeah. Yeah, well, you'll have a good time. I think it'll be open until 9 today. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. There's a lot going on here. Wow, I almost didn't make it up that hill. Should have gone the other way. That's all right. I'm going down now. Wow, that was quite a workout. I just wanted a better view of what was going on. You didn't get it. Nice bike. Oh, thanks. Hey, nice trailer. Thanks. Oh, no, but thanks for the offer. I got you on, <laughs> on GoPro oh, yeah. here. Yeah. A GoPro. Hey, Yay. parts of my trip. 
Yeah. 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 yeah, I hope to get to St. Charles tonight. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Mockins is really... Don't yeah. go Nobody you're... talks about it. Unless you're going out past there. I was... If you get off in Mockins, you can go across the river and... That's what I was going to do. I was going to camp uh, at a KOA that gets bad reviews, but it's an hour from hour bike ride from uh, the St. Louis East Amtrak. I take the Amtrak back, but I changed my plans. I'm just going to St. Charles tonight. There is a uh, really nice campground across the river, but you got to take a ferry. Oh yeah. And at this time, you might, you might not catch it. What? What's it called? The Golden Eagle Ferry, and then it's uh, Pierre Marquette is the name of the camera. Okay. Well, I'll definitely. So you'd have to go to Mockins, and then you get off on like Highway B, mm -hmm. and you get off. You know, you'd have to Google it or whatever. You know? Yeah. You know, there's so much information out there. It's hard to know until you actually talk to people that know the area. We've done it. We rode from here. Actually, we rode from Northern Illinois down to here and then back that way. Yeah. And we crossed the river like five or six times. Oh yeah. Well, I'll be back and do it. I've I've learned I need to slow down instead of doing 70 or 75 miles a day. Yeah. Because you know you meet lots of cool people and stuff, and right, yeah. a lot yeah, of good cool. scenery and history right. along the way, and that's that's well, the funnest you're part of it. It's really easy to just keep going. We have that. Happen. Like we we meant to do 60 or 80, and we got like 108. Yeah. It's like, uh, well, it's raining and it's cold. Let's keep going. Right. Well, I was gonna. Go up there. I went up the wrong hill. I went up to the propane tank. And there's nothing up there. I was just getting, uh, Where are you to go? just to get a better view of the band. I guess oh. just straight up this way. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. You went halfway up here. Yeah, yeah. Just. Go I went all the way to the top of the thing there. Yeah, you rode the hard hill and it goes nowhere. Oh, nowhere. Yeah, that's right. Uh huh. <laughs> the easy with... hill goes to the brewery. Okay. Just go well, straight this way. I think I'm just going to go ahead and take off and get into uh, St. Charles tonight. Yeah, it's so. about 25 miles. Away. I got to do this again and plan it a little differently. I the like. This is a cool town to be in. You know, it's the coolest, really, of any of the towns oh, yeah. I've seen along it's, here. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. It's fun. Lots of breweries, or, uh, a brewery, lots of wineries. Yeah, yeah. Lots of stuff going on. All right. Well, I was checking to see if the bike shop was open. I stayed um, at. Uh, the bike shop is open. Yeah, I saw that. These gloves. Yeah. Uh, are because uh, Raccoon stole a couple of stuff sacks of mine and my gloves, cycling gloves, I left out at Steamboat Junction. These are really pretty comfortable. They're working really well, so now I'm not in a hurry. But uh, I will when I get home. I'll get some. Okay. Unless they have some. I say they're definitely open. I'll take a look. Yeah. Terry, do you guys have gloves in there, bike gloves? All right. So check them out. Yeah, I'll take a look. You can get ice cream. Oh, do you? Small, extra small and large. All right. We'll see. Large is usually what I take. So, all right. Good hey, deal. hey, thanks a lot. Hey, have a good ride. All right. What's up? Got me set up. Good, some good old school gloves, leather palms and yeah. cotton on the top. Mesh. Yeah. Now you're breaking away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. I love that movie. <laughs> what is this? Uh, this is a mosaic, but Kim is the artist here. Oh, some good artwork. I make the pottery, metal sculpture for my buddy Brian. Yeah. Terry yeah. doing the drawings. Excellent. All right, I better hit the road before it gets too dark. So, thanks again. I'll try it. Um, the bike stop cafe is a good place in St. Charles if you want to just roll in. Okay. They're good for, they're bike friendly and they're, you need supplies or whatever, they got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Plus it's a good place to eat. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hi. Good. How are you? Hey, we'll see you.
Okay, well that was very interesting. Quirky, interesting, artsy, fun place. We had a bike shop that actually had gloves. Old school, leather and cotton. And uh, just some interesting people. Probably shouldn't have gone up that big hill. I think I'll be okay for 26 more miles. I'll get my Gatorade that I've carried with me all this time and also a granola bar or two in a bit and that'll be fine. You know, speaking of people and relationships and everything, Back there looked like a fun place, but I'd rather go to such a place with my wife, Nancy, and she's waiting for me in 26 point some miles in St. Charles. She came this way because she was concerned about the weather, and I called her on my low day yesterday. So rather than wait and see her late Saturday night, we get to spend some time together tonight in St. Charles and then maybe pot around in St. Louis a bit tomorrow before heading back. And of course, you know, she'll have to, we'll have to go out of her way and stop down there in Clinton so I can pick up my cheese. So, I've learned some things that we could do together out here. Could even take some bicycle, rent some bicycles a few miles down the road, or if it's further, some electric bikes. Come on up into Augusta. Spend the night with some live music and food and uh, it's a campground mm -hmm. it's called Klondike Park I don't know if the band was part of that but there are cabins I think in Klondike Park and then certainly tent sites and other things I mean RV hookups and stuff like that all right on the road again Okay, I found Climb Lake Park. Here it is. St. Charles County Parks and Recreation. Decidedly less fun looking than the last place. Which, as it turns out, was a winery. <laughs> I guess you don't have to drink, though, to have a good time there. All right, back on the road again. It did rain up here. I missed it, but the road is, uh, is wet. part of the evening. Crow Creek. I guess there has to be a Crow Creek somewhere. It smelled like paint. They should have called it Paint Creek. 21 miles to go. This is Matson. Missouri. One of the few trailheads left before I arrive in St. Charles. Just came through Defiance, Missouri. It's kind of cool too. Had a trail smokehouse back there. I don't know if they always do this, but maybe it was just a special event. They had a big tent with lights, strings of white lights, 
They're just breaking everything down. Pretty cool. Festive. You know, it's a Thursday night. There were some old guys, gray hair, sitting by the old mountain man or something. Old hippies, more like it. Sitting on a plastic at a plastic round table real close to the trail when I went by one <laughs> I scared them all one said like, oh man I thought that was a werewolf <laughs> and he repeated it I think they've had a little too much to drink their whole lives this is that time of day or night on the trail where it always reminds me of that story of Hansel and Gretel where the two kids stayed out a little too long and went a little too far. I've done that more often than I can count on bike rides. I do have a light. I'll be switching it on pretty soon. Well, I see there's some deep places on each side. I'm going to switch it on now. Alright. That's the lowest setting. It'll go higher, but it lasts longer on the lowest setting. At the Weldon Spring Trailhead, 10.3 miles to the next trailhead, Green's Bottom, which I believe is the last one prior to being in St. Charles. All along the way, there's been these historic markers, historical, and I haven't had the time to stop and read them. I'm sure they're probably online somewhere, though. Sometime it would be fun to do a more leisurely trip. Enjoy the local life and all the scenery and the educational. So St. Charles is about 14 miles away, and I think I can see the glow of city lights up above the tree canopy. That's a nice welcome sight. Sure is. Lights on medium now. The trail is not as reflective when it's wet. So I'm using a higher power. More ways than one. Getting close to 11 miles to go. Until we're getting closer to the big city. Found a another species of wildlife out here, in addition to everything else. And that is possum on this stretch. Didn't run in into any literally before or figuratively. And uh, Nearly did on the first one. Thought it was a cat in the ditch beside me. And then it jumped out in front of me. Ran across. I slammed on the squeaky brakes. And, and I'm glad it didn't stop in its tracks or I would have hit it. And then after that, two more. That section back there was paved, I think. And now we're back to... Yeah, back to the gravel. Yeah, it rained more up here. The gravel is really trudgy. And, uh, but soon I'll be done. Oh, speaking of wildlife, some things I learned. The grasshoppers on the more exposed you know, grasslands parts of the trail. They get out of your way. I don't think I hit, but just a few of those, maybe. I'm not even sure I did. I decided it wasn't worth the effort trying to avoid them because they were, they had the uncanny ability just to get out of the way. 
At nighttime, I don't know if you've seen the toads and frogs skipping out across the front when they see the light. Apparently, they like to sit on the road and mimic a leaf. They really blend in well with these leaves. And then, uh, of course, they get the bugs. So, most of them hop out of the way. I don't know how much energy I've expended trying to save toads' lives on this trip. I have hit a few. Turns out, it's been the ones that waited to hop until I finally, it was like a game of chicken, until I finally made a move. It was the wrong move, so even then, if I had just, whoa, stayed on course, you know, I don't know if I would have hit any frogs. I know the lens must be really fogged up right now. I don't know if I wiped it off with my gloves or whatever, if it would last very long or even be a, an improvement. I'm guessing that when I reach the next trailhead, I might have seven miles to go, but I'm not sure. branches down and the slogginess of the road means I can't, for safety's sake, go as fast as I want to go. Wow, there's a lot of little branches down. Light's been on the medium setting all this time. Man, when it's on bright and high, it really lights up. But like I said, it doesn't last all that long. Maybe a, I can't remember. An hour and a half or two hours and a half. I'm gonna cycle through. Oh, that was the low setting, okay. Uh, that's high. How about that? You can see the branches way out. I'm gonna go to medium. Yeah. Okay, it's the final countdown. Ten miles to go. That is to the St. Charles Trailhead. Once again, uh, a local said back at the winery that it's not uh, it's not worth going to Mockins. So. I don't know, I didn't ask about the trail conditions. I do know there's nothing out there. Well, I don't know that. I just read some books on it and, uh, and online. So unless you're going through it to get to somewhere, which was kind of my original plan, then, yeah, it's not a real destination. It's the most recent addition to the trip. So, basically after these 10 miles, I will have finished the Katy Trail.
eight miles to go. Just uh, went past the Greens Bottom Road, or the Greens Bottom, what do you call it, trailhead. And uh, I'm not going to stop this time. Usually I stop for a little refreshment, but it's only six miles to the end of the trail, if that. Probably five point something. So I'm going to keep on going. I like how the trail dried out because it's out here exposed and maybe they didn't get the rain but they got a little further west if they did it dried out in a hurry two miles to go another wildlife species this one's an insect well actually it's not it's a spider yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but some very thick webs that go across this pathway from time to time. And I uh, was just bit by one of them. I've been hitting the spider webs, but hoping that I'm leaving the spider in the dust, but I think that one got me. Two more miles. And I didn't want to say it before, until I'd gone all the way through the Schwal Schwal Schwalb Tires, Schwalb Marathon, held up. Several other people that I know got flats. They didn't have these particular tires. And uh, so I'm pleased with that. And I know that I had some help from above as well. getting hillier. In town kind of hilly. Oop, another spider web. Yeah, so those Schwab tires, I did discover, kind of surprised at first, and then it made sense, that by day two, I think I mentioned the front tire was down to 60, and the back tire was down to 40, it should have been 80. After I pumped them up, at the... Hostel. Then rode another day and a half, maybe at the most. No, actually 20 miles to one day and you know maybe I don't know 20 30 miles into today. Checked them out at the, the bike shop. Front tire was down to 60 already. Well, that's not a tire issue unless it let through a 
a thorn or some kind of road hazard. It's a tube issue. These are good tubes, I guess. They're Kenda. I think it's just the weight, the load. I'd like to weigh this outfit so that I knew how much I've been carrying around. I wouldn't have wanted to know it before the trip. It'll be useful for future trips if I take them to know what to expect and to know where I can cut back. Seems like we're going to come up to a residential area pretty soon. Yeah, I can see why, you know, the park rules apply here. Shouldn't be riding nighttime on the trail. It's been kind of thrilling. But if something were to go wrong, mechanical, flat tire, anything else, it would become kind of problematic. Although either way, I think you'd just end up calling somebody come and get you and maybe walk to the nearest intersection. But there are different hazards at night, different animals come out. And uh, it's more risky. So I would plan the trip in such a way where I wouldn't quote unquote have to do this next time. It's real sloggy here. I need to clean my bike up real well as well. Some gears aren't shifting quite as well as they did, but that'll be fixed after I clean it, lubricate it again, get some fine tuning. This part of the trail really winds around. And I don't know how close to the hotel it's going to be. Reserve the room at the Holiday Inn Express this time around. And just, I'm going to call it mission accomplished. Just saw some quick little rats crossing the road in front of me, two of them. Actually, I, they weren't very little. They were quick. A little compared to a possum. And in the last mile, maybe half mile, I uh, miscalculated back there when I said it was two. Sometime after I made that claim, the two mile marker came up. See an AMC movie place to the left. Maybe a convention center, hotel, or something.
These miles sure seem to go by slow out here. It's not like road miles. You know, Google estimates, I think, about 12 miles an hour when uh, to tell you how long it's going to take to get somewhere by bicycle. Normally, I don't have any problem with that, but with a loaded bike on a gravel trail, it hasn't been accurate, even though the Katy Trail is on the map, so to speak, for Google. This bike's performed really well, too. Gear. It's done real well. Got several compliments on the trek from nice bike to that's the perfect kind of bike for these conditions. I'd have to agree. Interesting tunnel. St. Charles Trailhead. Coming up here, maybe on the right. Where is it? Oh, there's zero four zero. Huh. Maybe it's just a little further. I think it was actually one, I mean, zero three nine point four. Pretty sure. Maybe Nancy's waiting on the other end. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how clear the maps are. And uh, we actually made arrangements that I would come to the hotel. I hope it's not too far away. If anybody's actually watched this video, Online, <laughs> thank you. Maybe uh, in the winter time it would be good when it's more difficult to get out there and ride. I might get it out and actually watch it. I use it as a cycling. You know, put it on the TV while cycling indoors. Oh, that's nice. Supper, anyone? It smells great. So I had a hamburger and a half on this trip. That was barbecue. It smelled good. But I think for supper tonight, I will have fish. It's 9.19. Late supper, but that would be good. State Park River Supply. I really don't know what's going on here. I'm about to look at my phone and see where the hotel is. Lots of these kind of gates. They show up real well in the dark, and I appreciate that.
Charles looks like a nice town. Quaint. Yay, it looks like the depot is there, which usually means that's the trailhead. from Bluffton Okay, 78.9 is a mile so far with an average speed of 9.6, so it was a very good day. And uh, now I'm going to check out to get to the hotel. Okay, it's been a crazy night so far. My phone died just as Nancy and I were connecting on where to meet. And then I decided and I asked somebody for their phone. And uh, then I couldn't remember Nancy's number because I have it in my favorites. So they told me where to go to get electricity and put me in place so I can hear to the Wellens Pub. And uh, she like, went to reach for my charger and it's gone. It looked like my pack was open. It must have bounced out. And I remember when I must have left it open when I grabbed the last energy bar. So there's Nancy now. It looks like we're going to make a reunion. All that noise is uh, Picasso's coffee shop across the street. 